Hello guys and gals and welcome to a very vampire-y, vampiric episode of Vampiridus. Because we are going to be looking at the Trangul set. The Trangul set is very unique in all of Diablo 2 because it offers a very interesting effect which turns you into a whole vampire. Not even going to lie, it's kind of cool. Now, Trangul set does come with some negatives, and uh, unfortunately this is because Trangul set turns you into a vampire. So if you guys are unaware what this means, uh, I will try do my best to explain. So before we even go over the set itself, we need to talk about the vampire form. And uh, this is something that I neglected to do last time I did a video on this uh, particular set, so I will not be neglecting it this time. Um, so one of the things right off the bat that I need you guys to know is that when you are wearing the Tranquil set and when you turn yourself into a, uh, a vampire, um, you are given the ability to... I'm going to take some, some of this gear off so I'm not uh, running, rocking stuff that's not part of the set. You are given the ability to turn into a vampire. Well, if you are not a vampire and you run around, notice that my defense turns to line line, right? So when you are running, there is a penalty. I did an entire video on this, by the way, on the on the penalties of running around on a, uh, a character. You lose your defense. You also lose your block chance. Your block chance goes down to 25% of what it normally is. And uh, and it's capped at 25%, by the way, too. So, uh, so interesting. However, when you are a vampire and you run around you move at this particular pace however if you walk you move at the same pace and you don't lose your defense this is a very interesting uh, mechanic when it comes to the uh, necromancer is that the necromancer in this form will gain a rather substantial defensive mechanic bonus because he can run and maintain his defense and maintain his block chance uh, if you were going to build block chance on your Necromancer. Uh, there are some downsides to this form, however, as well. Uh, when you obtain this form, you also obtain the s casting speed of the Vampire. So the Vampire has his own specific breakpoints, uh, separate from that of the Necromancer. And this makes him, unfortunately, a very terrible caster. Uh, which is kind of sad, considering the fact that being a vampire gives you a bunch of really nice spells in Diablo 2, which allow you to cast some really cool spells that you wouldn't other be able to cast. However, to give you an example, um, a regular necromancer in human form has a casting frame of 15 with 0% uh, faster cast. Uh, the necromancer in his vampire form has a 23 fa frame casting rate at 0% faster cast. Uh, with a meager 75% faster cast, the necromancer can bring his frames down to 10, which is, uh, which is pretty impressive. However, the vampire can't even get to 10 frames. Um, even with 180% faster cast, the vampire is stuck at 13 frames, and, and it is absolutely awful as far as faster cast is concerned. Um, he does go up, and faster cast will help him, but the problem is, is that he's so ridiculously low uh, at 23 frames, which is essentially a full second of casting, um, that, uh, that even if you have 86% faster cast, which is doable, um, you are still stuck at 15 frames, which is, uh, which is terrible. Um, now, this does pose an issue, and it makes this set not very good for ca caster classes, like, for instance, if you were a Bone Spear or Bone Spirit Necromancer, not very great. Uh, but pretty decent for a Summoning Necromancer. Summoning Necromancers don't really worry too much about cast speed anyway. So let's go over the set. <clears throat> let's talk about the set um, piece by piece, shall we? So let's start out with one of the pieces that's probably the most sought after, um, and that is the Triangle's Claws Heavy Bracers. Uh, the Triangle's Claws Heavy Bracers are sought after because they are one of the few gloves in the game that have faster cast on them. Uh, they have 20% faster cast, as you can see. 
Now, uh, Triangle's Claws have 74 defense. Uh, they have a strength requirement of 58, which is relatively low, and a level requirement of 45, which is relatively low. They give plus two curses, which most necromancers do not care about. Uh, they also give plus 20% faster cast rate, which is definitely very nice. 25% poison skill damage here is massive, and uh, this actually makes these best in slot for just about any poison skill damage damage character in the game. So if you're a uh, Poison Nova Necromancer, Poison Dagger Necromancer, Rabies Druid, or maybe even a Plague Javelin Amazon, uh, these are going to be go-to gauntlets to increase your poison damage even higher. We also have 30 raw defense on these and uh, cold resistance 30%, uh, which is a consideration when choosing your 20% faster cast of gauntlets. Do you want that cold res or do you want uh, the regeneration that Mage Fists gives you? Uh, now, there's no green bonuses on these, and, uh, and well, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, we also have Triangle's Guy's Bone Visage, uh, which is a uh, 257 defense helmet, 106 strength, level 65 requirement. It has 25% fast hit recovery, which is always nice to have on gear, uh, because it's going to help keep you out of those faster hit recovery loops. Uh, stun loops and uh, 100 bonus defense which does vary from 80 to 100 replenish life 5 which is static 150 to mana which is pretty massive and will actually help you quite a lot as far as your regeneration is concerned um, when you think about 150 to mana I mean that's that's a pretty chunky boost uh, if we also have attacker takes damage of 20 which unless you're walking around in normal difficulty isn't really going to do very much uh, of course, you can also put a socket on this with Larzik, and, uh, and you could throw something nice in here, like maybe an Umrune or something like that for more resistances, or, uh, or you know, even on Perfect Topaz for more magic find. We also have Triangle's Scales, which is an armor that I uh, absolutely adore, uh, just simply because it is a very nice plus two skill armor that you can get your hands on for Necromancer Summons uh, very early on. It also has some other really nice effects, and as we go over it, I think you'll agree. So we have 857 defense on this. Uh, we have a strength requirement of 84 and a level requirement of 49. Um, it is a, a nightmare level armor, which is uh, it's not even not even fully upgraded, so we're going to play around with that. Uh, we have plus two summoning skills, 40% faster run walk, which is amazing, uh, and can be stacked with a nice pair of 40% faster run walk boots. Uh, we have 150% enhanced defense on this, which is great, and that's why it has such nice defense on it already. With 100 defense versus missile, which is actually pretty sweet for a Necromancer, because you're usually in the back, and missiles to attacks are usually the things that get to you. Uh, we have 40% poison resist, which isn't the greatest resistance, but having 40% poison resistance is certainly nice. We also have negative 40% requirements on this, uh, which is a relatively large amount of negative requirements and will probably facilitate a very nice upgrade here. Um, we also have some green bonuses on this, which are not present on a lot of the other pieces. Um, so the first green bonus that you get is actually with, uh, I believe it's three pieces... Yes, it's Lightning Resist 50% with three pieces. And uh, for the entire set, you also get a very nice 25% damage reduction uh, for physical damage, which is freaking amazing. Um, that means that literally any melee attack that comes in is going to be reduced by 25% on its physical damage. Um, and, uh, and it will actually counter Amplify damage as well by 25%, uh, which means that you will only end up with negative 75% to your physical resistance instead of negative 100%. Uh, we also have Triangle's Girth Belt, which actually makes its way into quite a few builds, uh, specifically because it has the Cannot Be Frozen mechanic on it. Uh, but other than that, it also has some other nice effects. It has 166 defense. Uh, it has 91 strength with uh, level 62 requirement. It is a troll belt, and it is uh, already elite, but it does have uh, negative 40% requirements on it, which brings it down quite a lot. Uh, we have 100 extra defense on this, which does vary from 75 to 100. It has 66 extra life, which uh, does not vary. Uh, we also have uh, 50 to mana, which does vary from 25 to 50. So if you want to look for a perfect one of these, um, honestly, that mana could come in pretty clutch, as well as the defense uh, on this is actually pretty nice. So finding a uh, 100 defense 50 mana uh, variant of this might be a good idea. 30 to maximum mana uh, on this. Uh, stamina as well, which is not really a very good thing. And then, of course, the cannot be frozen, which uh, which is probably the main draw of this belt. Um, it also has a 3 item bonus of 40% uh, cold resistance. So if you're rocking at least 
let's say the wing, the gloves, and the uh, the belt, or perhaps the armor, the gloves, and the belt, um, or you know even the um, helmet, the gloves, and the belt. Um, you'll get that forty percent, which is uh, which is nice. Um, then we also have Trangle's Wing. Uh, Trangle's Wing is the Cantor Trophy, and the Cantor Trophy is, of course, a Necromancer only, uh, which means that you cannot use this set on a non-Necromancer complete. Uh, we also get uh, 189 defense with this, with a chance to block of 60% on the Necromancer. Uh, we get 50 strength requirement and level 54 level requirement. Uh, it has plus two poison and bone skills, which is very nice. It also has 30% increased chance of blocking, uh, which kind of goes along with that thing I was talking about earlier about the vampire uh, being able to block while he's technically uh, running, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> floating is more like it. Uh, he also has 125 extra defense on this, which is just added flat, 25 to strength, uh, 15 to dexterity, which will also help your blocking chance. A uh, fire resistance of 45%, which does vary from 38 to 45%, a very odd variable, and 40% uh, poison resistance, which does not vary. Uh, we also get some very nice green bonuses on this. Uh, for three items, you get negative 25% enemy poison resistance. Um, and this is something that actually you could utilize on a rabies druid as well as a poison necromancer. Uh, what you would... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, just the poison necromancer. I'm, I'm uh, totally... Uh, fubbed my brain in here a derp i'm derping uh this is obviously necromancer only so you're not gonna be able to get the negative 25 percent poison resistance on anyone else except for the necro however if you are a necromancer a poison necromancer specifically rocket at least three pieces like the wing the belt and the gloves is actually a really solid combo because you get the 25 percent poison skill damage and you also get the negative 25 percent enemy poison resistance which is very very effective um, and for four items, you also get Replenish Life plus 15 on the shield. Not very, very nice. Now, the set gives you some very interesting bonuses as you complete it. And uh, we need to talk about the set bonuses really quick. So right off the bat, you see we get plus 18 to Fireball. It actually does give us Fireball. So we actually do have a level 18 Fireball, which does 171 to uh, 196 damage, which is kind of nuts. Um, now, granted... It's not a lot of damage, and uh, and at this particular level, uh, it's not a huge deal. Uh, for the next piece, if we were put on the belt, for instance, we also get plus 13 to fire wall, as well as 30% regeneration to mana. So we will actually have fire wall to cast. Um, now, Firewall does only 693 to 717 damage per second, but it's still uh, pretty impressive to be able to cast this as a Necromancer. Um, and if you're wondering if this can give you plus 18 to Fireball or plus 13 to Firewall as a Sorceress, it does not. Um, it's been tested, and it, it capped it on Sorceresses to only plus 3 to prevent you guys from utilizing it in that way. Um, now, if you put on another piece, you will also get uh, plus 10 to Meteor. So not only do we get Fireball and Firewall, but we also have a Meteor attack. Now, none of these do particularly high amounts of damage, and the reason why they don't do particularly high amounts of damage is because you don't have any Fire Mastery. Well, wait, there's more. When you throw on the full set, you get plus 3 to Fire Mastery, as well as plus 3 to Necromancer skills, plus 20% lifesteal. Not exactly sure why the lifesteal is on there. I guess it's just going with the vampire motif. Uh, we also get the um, uh, plus 200 defense, plus 100 mana, regenerate mana 60, and all resistances 50. Now, the interesting thing about the warmth, although it, you cannot see it and it does not actually exist on the bar, you do actually possess the warmth skill when you're wearing, or sorry, the, the fire mastery skill when you're wearing the entire set. I don't know why I said warmth. You get the entire bonus. And if you're rocking things like Mara's, which will give you plus two to all skills, it will actually give you a bonus to the Fire Mastery ability. So let's uh, do some tests here. So right off the bat, we have um, 246 to 282 on the Fireball. And we're rocking uh, 459 to 514 on the Meteor. And if, uh, if we throw on the Mars Kaleidoscope, you'll see that Meteor is now level 12, and our damage has bumped up to 627 to 693. 
Our fireballs bumped up to level 20, and it's now 315 to 357. We can throw on the Soges and go even higher. So now we're rocking 391 to 441 and uh, 817 to 896. And you can continue to do this. You can put on plus skill equipment. So maybe we a Spirit or a Hoto instead of a Wand. So that's plus three. Um, you could also rock uh, plus uh, one on your Annihilist charm and so forth and so on. And anything that you can get that will beef up your Fire Mastery um, is going to uh, to give you more damage. Um, as you can see right now, my Firewall is 1,700 to 1,741. And uh, the interesting thing here is that as a Summon Necromancer, you don't really have a lot to do. You know, you're in the back, you're playing with your minions, your minions are doing their job, and uh, and just in general, you know, you've got this this kind of like lackluster situation where maybe you're clicking on everything that you can click on, you know, you're you you're 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 kind of like maybe like uh, cursing a little bit, but other than that, there's really not a lot to do. So you can just throw off a couple firewalls, throw a couple meteors, throw a couple fireballs out. Um, it's certainly not going to hurt anything, and if you have decent mana regeneration. You don't really have to worry about it. It's kind of fun to uh, to have this ability to be able to do this kind of thing. Um, now, granted, you are locked into this particular set, and uh, and that does kind of kind of uh, suck. But you could also just simply rock three pieces and get firewall. Um, I've actually done this on a conviction paladin, and it was kind of broken. Um, I have a video up on that if you guys want to see it. Um, now. This uh, particular set can be upgraded, and that's what we came here for. So let's upgrade this set, and let's see what happens. So the first piece that we're going to upgrade is Triangle's Claws Heavy Bracers, which, of course, is going to require a limb, a co, and a perfect diamond. Uh, this is going to go from 74 defense, 58 strength, level 45, to 97 defense, 106 strength, level 58. Now, these gloves are really, really popular for sorceresses. And that 106 strength requirement is not massive. The level 58 requirement is not massive. I honestly think that might be a pretty solid upgrade. Uh, specifically because, and hear me out, these are endgame gauntlets. A lot of the times, people will be using either Mage Fists or Trangles, one or the other, right? And, uh, and the upgrade on this was actually pretty solid as far as, uh, as not requiring too much strength. 106 is well below Spirit. Um, the level requirement did not go up very high to level 58, so actually kind of decent. And the defense honestly didn't go up like too massively high. I mean, we're talking about what, what, uh, 74 defense to uh, to 97. Granted, not really worth that. However, if you were using these as your best in slot equipment on your sorceress. Why not? If you were using these as your best in slot equipment on your rabies druid, why not? If you were using these as your best in slot equipment on, you know, any character, why not? Why not get that little bit of extra defense for relatively no negative effect? Um, let's do the uh, armor next. This should be interesting. So the Trangles Scales Chaos Armor. He's going to upgrade, I believe, what is a Shadow Plate, I think is what it is. So it's going to go from 857 defense, 84 strength, level 49, to 1167 defense, uh, 138 strength, level 64. So the strength did go up pretty high, uh, but with that negative 40% on there, uh, it did keep it relatively low considering it probably would be like 220 if it didn't have that um, and level 64 is not ridiculously high so if you were utilizing this set specifically on a necromancer you really wanted to utilize the trangles and turn into a vampire i could totally see upgrading that that might not be a terrible upgrade um, especially considering you already need 106 strength and 106 strength for the van braces if you upgrade those um, it's not uh, a really large journey from 106 strength for the helmet to 138 strength to the plate. And if you were using, um, I'm trying to think here right off the top of my head, I think Marowaks actually have some strength on them as well, which could, uh, which could definitely be a easier way to reach that as opposed to putting the actual strength points in. Um, that's interesting. 
Not exactly an upgrade that I would do on a regular basis, but if I was rocking a Trangul's Necromancer on the Vampire, I could see doing that. Um, and then the last upgrade is actually one that I don't think a lot of people even realize is not elite. It's the uh, Cantor Trophy. So the Cantor Trophy is actually um, upgradable to the Succubus Skull, uh, which goes from 189 defense, chance to block 60%, strength 50, level 54 requirement, to the Succubus Skull, which is 266 defense, chance to block 60%, strength 95, level 60. Um, and it does go up to level 67 with the greed bonuses. So, very interesting here that the Trangle's Wing, Cantor Trophy, um, does get a small defense bonus. The uh, Trangle's Scales does get a small defense bonus. And the uh, Vampire Braces do get a small defense bonus. I was really hoping that the uh, block chance on the, the Succubus Skull would have gone up just a little bit from the, um, from the Cantor Trophy, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Uh, this particular item um, and uh, is, is just another one of those things where if you're using it, if you're utilizing this on a regular basis on a character, if you're a uh, poison necromancer, poison nova necromancer, um, who is utilizing the uh, Trangle's Wing, which most poison nova necromancers do because of that negative 20 any enemy poison resistance, negative 25% enemy poison resistance, it's a great upgrade. I think that is a solid upgrade for a character who is utilizing this on a regular basis. The strength requirement did not go up enough to really make this a big deal. The level requirement did not go up enough to really make this a big deal. And the extra defense is certainly nice. So again, we're looking at a situation where if you're rocking this particular item, that's a solid upgrade. If you're rocking this particular item, that's a solid upgrade. And if you're rocking this particular item, that's a sub upgrade. And if you're playing the drinking game today, you've got to say uh, you got to drink a shot every single time I say the word rocking. So remember, rocking, rocking, rocking. Don't die. <laughs> anyway, this particular set is definitely an interesting one as far as upgrades are concerned. I'm actually kind of excited about this. Um, this upgrade is certainly something that a lot of people, I think, will be doing. This upgrade is one that I will see a lot of people doing. I think these two upgrades right here are very solid and very good options if you are utilizing these pieces of equipment. Uh, this particular upgrade, only really viable if you're actually utilizing this set as a Vampire Necro. Um, all in all, I think all three pieces being upgraded definitely gives you a nicer defense. Um, I mean, you get a pretty nice little defense bonus from each item, which does add up to a higher amount, which will help keep you alive a little bit better. Um, hmm. Not bad. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're talking about a scaly, red-eyed, bald-headed, floating vampire. <laughs> and uh, as always, keep watching.